Welcome back to Cinemation Movie Recaps. Today, I show you the movie White Girl from 2016. Beware of spoilers. Lee and her friend Katie move into their new apartment in Queens. They notice a group of Latinos nearby who whistle and catcall them. Lee looks disturbed by this behavior. Lee is a free-spirited partagore and has enrolled in New York College who uses drugs recreationally. Lee leads a very basic life. She is not popular in college and drifts in and out without drawing much attention to herself, mostly looking distracted. Lee and some of her drug buddies have a party complete with drugs and booze. The group talks about their place being more dangerous compared to the dorm rooms that college students usually apply for. Lee walks up to the apartment's window and looks below. She witnesses a drug trade between the Latinos and another man. As she is watching, one of her friends declares that they are officially out of weed. Leah offers to buy some for the group. They ask her where she will source it from. Leah lets them in on the drug trade that just came down right outside their building by the Latinos. With their blessing, she walks out in the cold night to do the dirty work. Across the street from their apartment, the Latinos are smoking cigarettes. She confidently walks up to them and states her business. She does not look too happy when one of the Latinos called Blue denies having drugs for sale. He advises her against doing drugs. Leah walks away. Leah is working on her computer when her boss interrupts her. He asks her what she is doing, why she is not working harder, and finally asks her to follow him. He takes her to his office and asks her to review a painting. She barely says anything when he snorts some drugs. She accepts his invitation to join. A few moments later, they get hot. He asks Leah for a blowjob. His secretary knocks in the middle of the action. They quickly wind up as she walks in. She looks at Leah with amusement while she updates the boss. Leah and her boss cover up the event and move on. Leah takes the subway back to her apartment. She stops at a store to buy a pack of beer. There Leah runs into Blue again, who formally introduces himself. She asks him if Blue is his real name. He tells her that his friends call him Blue because he is always sad. After meeting her, he says he is not so Blue anymore. Leah takes him back to her apartment. She opens up two bottles of beer, one for her and one for Blue. Even after numerous objections from her roommate, she lets Blue stay over. A few moments later, his friends climb up into the apartment. It is an invasion of privacy, but Leah does not mind. She looks jolly. Later, they are all hooked on smoking and talking mainly about drugs. Leah tries to buy drugs from them again. Blue becomes agitated so he leaves the apartment. Leah follows after him, and he tells her that he does not get along with people who do drugs, even if he is a dealer. Blue tells Leah that this roof was their spot. He means it was where he and his group used to deal. They could not deal on the streets because of a woman who would always come around sniffing. He calls her a bitch but quickly adds that he doesn't use this word except for this woman. Leah moves closer to him, and they share a kiss. They fall into a frenzy and make out on the rooftop. Leah is working the morning after. Her boss walks up to her again. He leans in pretending to help her work. He gives her a few instructions, and in the end, suggests they will meet that night. Leah excuses herself, and explains that she is unpacking, and would not have the time to meet him. He picks up a card from her desk and starts reading it. Leah's mother sent her the card. Leah snatches it back from him. Leah walks back to her apartment and finds Blue sitting on the stairs outside. He asks her whether or not she is committed to anyone. Leah inquires why he would ask such a question. He says that he just assumed a girl like Leah would probably be dating someone. Leah does not understand why he would assume such a thing. He looks at her while sipping his beer. Blue confesses that he really likes Leah, and they both smile brightly. He says that he will take really good care of her. She smiles and lets him know that she can take care of herself. He insists he ought to look after her. He also introduces her to his Tata later in the evening. Blue takes Leah to her room. She picks up a small packet of cocaine and asks him how much it is. He replies with 20. She asserts that it could be a 60 bag. She asks him to join her at a party in the city. He declines, saying that he does not deal in the city. Leah smiles playfully and emphasizes that it will be fun. Leah, Blue, 
and the rest of the friends go to the club in the city at Leah's behest. They make a great profit on the drugs and thoroughly enjoy the party. The party carries on throughout the night. They mess around, have sex, and do drugs. They return in the morning, completely wasted. Leah's friend pukes outside the school where she is a teacher. Blue gets into a fight with his Latino brothers. He throws them out of the cab and drives away, saying he cannot take their negativity. He and Leah make love in the backseat of the car. He makes a pit stop at a shady place in one of the worst areas of town. He disappears below the staircase. Leah waits a couple more minutes before she gets out of the cab as well. She goes and sits on the stairs. A middle-aged man comes around smoking a cigarette. He looks at her, trying to figure out her complexity. Leah asks him if she could get a smoke, to which he agrees. He offers her another cigarette and lights it for her. He advises her to be safe and leaves. At this point, Blue hurriedly comes for Leah and asks her to follow him down. She is a little confused, but agrees to go. Inside, Blue is begging his drug supplier to give him some time and he will get him the money. It appears that Blue is behind on his payments and the drug supplier, a big hefty man, is enraged. He has cocaine spread on the table and signals Leah to come sit in his lap. Leah complies. He looks at her expectantly. She understands and snorts a line up her nose. Blue and his dealer strike another deal and Blue leaves with Leah. Blue takes Leah to a restaurant. He tells her that the guy they just met is very dangerous. He took out his cousin's eye with a fork. Leah is just relieved that they got the cocaine. Blue admits that if he keeps dealing to Lee's city friends, he will soon have enough money to pay his dealer. He asks her if she likes Italian food as a man knocks on the restaurant window. Leah smiles and says who doesn't like Italian. He tells her that he will take her out tonight. He sets his cocaine on the seat as he gets up. He tells Leah that he will be back shortly. She just thinks about what she wants to eat. He leaves. Leah gets up, drink in hand, and explores the restaurant. She watches as Blue exchanges drugs with the man at the window. As she sips her coke, she hears a loud thud and Blue swearing. She faces peers out the window, completely taken aback as she witnesses the arrest of her lover Blue. The police find a small packet of cocaine in his pants, enough to arrest him. She watches as they put handcuffs on him throw him in the car, and drive off. Leah looks afraid. Leah spirals, out of control. She wants Blue back. She regularly takes cocaine. Leah visits Blue in prison looking beautiful. Blue is brought to the visiting room with other inmates. They both look at each other and smile. Blue starts saying that his Latino friend Kilo was right. He shouldn't have dealt in the city. He looks frustrated as he recalls his punishment. 20 years in prison for 10 ounces of cocaine. Leah looks confused. She tells him that there is no way he got locked up for 10 ounces as she picked up the package. The police never got it. Blue cannot believe his ears. He yells with joy as he settles down again. He instructs Leah to return that package to his dealer Lloyd as he might be wondering where Blue ended up. He looks tense as he speaks, maybe because he is afraid of what Lloyd might do to him if he felt like he was threatened by Blue's arrest. Blue is hopeful that he might get out of jail, but he cannot do that by giving up his dealers. Leah reassures him that she will help him figure it out. She always figures it out. Leah meets with a lawyer and explains the situation to him. He looks at her, judging her and her choices. She is adamant that Blue is a kind person and deserves a second chance. He was only dealing to help her ailing grandmother get good health care. The lawyer agrees to help her disapprovingly and put some of the ideas he had on the table. Now, it was up to Leah to arrange a whopping sum of $25,000 to pay for the lawyer's fees. Leah sells some cocaine to her boss and her friends and she makes small packets of the drug to sell in a bar later. As they deal inside the pub, the bouncer notices Leah waving money to the Latino friends of Blue. He throws them outside the bar after punching Kilo. Leah and the others get into a fight. Leah stays and deals while they all leave. She leaves alone. When she reaches her apartment, the dealer Lloyd is at her door. He abuses her and harasses her for money. She tells him that she doesn't even know Blue that well, but he will get his money. Lloyd pinches.
her nipples and leaves. Later, she contacts her boss again and hooks up with him. In the morning that follows, she tells him about her financial struggles and the fact that the dealer Lloyd knows where she lives. She skips the part about the abuse she faced. She starts sobbing and gets up to leave. He calls her back and offers his help. They party in a high-end nightclub and collect loads of money. Leah gets very high and, and shouts and yells. She takes off her top and exposes her breasts to people. She dances like a madwoman. It looks as though she is having the time of her life. She passes out while trying to sexually please her boss. Leah wakes up in the morning to realize that she is still in the club. She goes back to her boss's apartment, where her boss and another one of his employees congratulate Leah on her achievement. Leah looks concerned. She has lost the money she made. She asks them if they have seen it, and they look dumbfounded. Leah is convinced that the money was in her hands before she passed out. She does not know what to do. Back at the lawyer's office, she tries hard to keep a straight face, but fails as she starts crying. She tries leaving the office in dismay, but he tells her to wait as all is not lost yet. She comes back. He treats her to dinner and fills her up with alcohol. He goes back with Leah to her apartment. Leah is almost unconscious due to how drunk she is and is not aware of herself. The lawyer takes full advantage of her and rapes her as he pleases. Later, her roommate hears her sobbing in the toilet. She is concerned and opens the toilet door to see Leah at her worst. She is puking all over the toilet seat and crying uncontrollably. For the next few days, she looks like she is depressed. She stays in bed and does nothing productive. One day she wakes up to find Blue sitting right next to her. She is shocked and overjoyed. They go out together and take a walk down the streets. Blue asks Leah to marry him. Leah thinks that he is joking. She has not yet told him about the rape or the package and Lloyd's visit to her apartment. As they stroll down the streets, Lloyd appears out of nowhere and starts hitting Blue. Blue falls on the pavement. Leah screams and tries to defend him, but it is of no use. She is no match for Lloyd, and he quickly restrains her. Blue swings a glass bottle at Lloyd and keeps on hitting him until he is dead. He asks Leah if she gave back the package, but she is too horrified and scared to speak. Blue is arrested again, this time for murder and leaves Leah behind with anger and mistrust.